hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and today, we'll be looking at another of the titles of Mary, the New Eve. We'll look at where this teaching comes from and some of the similarities between Mary and Eve as we understand them. In preparing for this, we've already done some videos on Mary being conceived without sin, being the mother of Jesus, and her willing cooperation with his decision to sacrifice himself on the cross. So, where do we get the idea of a new Eve? The first man, Adam, was made into a living soul, the last Adam into a quickening spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. In this verse, St. Paul refers to Jesus as the last Adam. This is because Adam acted in our place before God, and his actions, therefore, also affect us. The same is true of Jesus. And as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. However, as Ephesians 5 points out, the bride of Christ isn't Mary, it's the church. So wouldn't the church be the new Eve? The answer is no, because Eve had other qualities aside from just being Adam's spouse. Let's look at just a few of them. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into this world, and by sin death, and so death passed upon all men, in whom all have sinned. Romans 5:12. This tells the whole story of Adam's sin, how Adam's first sin caused death. As we've discussed in past episodes, this kind of death implies not just physical death, but original sin and vulnerability to evil temptations as well. This means that before committing this sin, neither Eve nor Adam had any sin on their souls, which is the first similarity with Jesus and Mary. Each of them was also conceived without sin. What happened next to Eve? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath commanded us that we should not eat, and that we should not touch it, lest perhaps we die. And the serpent said to the woman, No, you shall not die of the death. Genesis 3, 3-4 And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be done? Because I know not man. And the angel answering said to her, The Holy, the Holy Ghost, Ghost shall come, come upon, upon thee, thee, and the, and the power, power of the Most, of the Most High, High shall overshadow thee. thee. Luke 1, 34-35 both Eve and Mary had a conversation with an angel, in which both they and the angels speak. The difference, of course, being that the serpent, Satan, was an evil fallen angel, while Gabriel, who spoke to Mary, wasn't. Both Mary and Eve were also virgins at the time, Mary because she'd chosen to remain one, and Eve because she'd just been created only a short time before, and didn't start to procreate with Adam until they left the garden. And she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave to her husband who did eat. Genesis 3, 6b And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. Luke 1, 38a Each agrees with what's being proposed by the angel, and each commits to a course of action, assisting their own Adam in complying with the proposed plan. However, in Adam's case, the plan was sin, and was against the will of God, while in the case of Gabriel, the plan was redemption, and was a plan God wanted to succeed. However, there's another major similarity between these two as well. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all the living. Genesis 3:20. And the dragon was angry against the woman, and went to make war with the rest of her seed who keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation twelve seventeen. Each becomes the mother of all living people. Eve is the mother of all those who are biologically alive, and Mary is the mother of everyone who inherits eternal life. These are just a few ways in which Mary's title as the new Eve makes plenty of sense. Next time, where did rosary beads come from? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.